Good morning, and you're very welcome to this morning's live. Now, this morning, we're gonna be talking about retrofitting and grants. What grants are available, how to apply for them, uh, basically everything that you need to know. And honestly, I can say that we have had the most questions we have ever had. Um, I didn't think that was possible, but, but they're still coming in. So my apologies to anybody that we've missed. We'll go back afterwards and see if we can cover them. Do reach out to us uh, over the weekend. Um, we'll do our best to help, but I've tried to group them all as much as I can now and we'll go through them all. Um, so some brilliant questions and I'm absolutely delighted to say that we have Fergal Cantwell joining me this morning. Uh, Fergal is a retrofitting expert. He's just fantastic. He's a wealth of information. Um, you should definitely check out his own Instagram account as well because he's got loads and loads of tips uh, his own Q&As and things like that. So loads of information there for anybody who's interested after this. Um, but I see him waiting, so I'll in invite him now. There we go. Good morning, Fergal, how are you? Hi, Denise, how are you? I'm good, great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for this. There you go. I think it's freezing a little bit, Fergal. Um, yes. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's it's stalling a tiny bit. Maybe come off the Wi-Fi. Sometimes that helps, Fergal, if 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 you can. Um, oh, sugar. Hopefully this works. Every time I have an energy expert on their house is so well insulated, they have trouble with Wi-Fi. So this is one of the pitfalls. We must uh, do a live on that by itself. But just while he's sorting out that connection, so some amazing questions actually, and just incredible um, how many of you are planning on work and planning on doing, you know, some kind of retrofitting to your home. But there just seems to be so much confusion out there about the grants, about how to apply, where to source information, you know, how to even find out what you can, um, how much money you can can get from the grants. So hopefully now if Fergal can find his connection, we'll be able to go through them. And do keep asking the questions. So you can send them in now as we're chatting. We'll, we'll do our best because there's an awful lot of people asking, you know, similar type questions. So we'll just try and group them together as much as we can. And for anybody really interested in this topic, like a lot of the questions that came in um, about different things like heat pumps, different kinds of insulation, you know, all that sort of stuff. If you want to go back and check out the live that I did with uh, Tomas O'Leary from Moss Art, it's just brilliant. You know, he gave such practical advice, really easy to understand, great tips for anybody who's planning on, you know, changing their windows, insulating, anything at all. So go back and have a look at that. And I might actually pop it in on our uh, um, stories afterwards as well so that you can uh, find it easily. But I see Fergal there again. So hopefully this will work. Sorry about this now, everybody, but we'll get there. Hi, Fergal. That looks Hello, better. Deborah. Yes, fabulous. Yeah, yeah, you're not freezing <laughs> on me there. I was just saying anybody, any energy expert we've ever had on have had trouble with their Wi-Fi because you're just too well the insulated. Insulation. Your homes are far too well insulated. <laughs> yeah, it's a real problem. <laughs> well, listen, thanks so much. And I was saying in the intro, Fergal, we have never had so many questions, my goodness. So, I mean, there's so much to go through. And as I always say, I'd sent you a load of questions, but let's just skip over them because... I mean, there's a huge amount of confusion out there with the grants, how to apply, yes. you know, what you're eligible for. It's, would you find that with people? It just seems to be really confusing. Yeah, I suppose at the minute we are looking at kind of three kind of homeowners that are retrofit. Yeah. There's those that are aware of grants and using them, which is mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Then there's those that are retrofitting and not aware of grants, and that's terrible. Mm -hmm. And then there are those that are aware of the grants, but Johnny down the road told them that they're not worth applying for, they're either too expensive or there's too much yes. And yes. they're the three types that are, are at the minute. So what I'd say is 
this is a great platform to to maybe make people aware of what's available um mm -hmm. maybe take the mystery out of it as mm -hmm. best we can mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean huge inquiries coming in about the new housing grants and yeah. that's great um people are becoming more aware and yeah i mean there's there's good funding out there and mm. there's great help uh, to um to get your retrofit done you know Mm -hmm. No, that's amazing. And I suppose if we, if we just start with that, then, so I suppose <laughs> loads and loads and loads of people asking, where do you start? So where, where does somebody start? Where's the best source of information so that people can um, get up to speed with, with everything out there at the moment? Yeah, I suppose SAI are the, are the um, regulators of this industry. So SAI have, mm. have good information on their own website mm. where you can find out uh, essentially what's available and, and how to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me, I'm working with the National Home Retrofit Scheme, which is the new vehicle that was launched last November. And mm -hmm. um, that's a 35% grant for, for homeowners. And your initial starting point is going to be with um, a competent PER assessment. Yeah, so okay. what you need to look at is basically what your existing fabric and heating system are doing and mm -hmm. how to get up to a, a minimum. B2 is the magic number in, in these grants. So um, mm -hmm. even in, in, in NZ retrofit, it's B2. Now, some mm -hmm. will argue that um, it should be an A rated, that we should be supporting it too. But in fairness to SEI and the government, and we're, we're, we're trying to push this on. I mean, home retrofitting is a, is a byproduct of decarbonisation, where we're trying to get, you know. So it's just, mm -hmm. that's the, the housing is the low hanging fruit that should be addressed. But, mm -hmm. If you're looking at um, energy grants, I mean, there, there is a lot of help out there, but if, you, if you're going to look at, should we go to a B2 or an A or, or that kind of thing? Well, it, it could come down to, a, we'll do 500,000 at B2, or we could do 300,000 at A. So I would suggest we go over to 500,000 at B2, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Everyone gets a, a, a good um, standard of retrofit at that level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Brilliant. Um, and then uh, just somebody asked the question, you know, is it like if, if they're trying to get pricing or get quotes and stuff like that, what do they need? What do they need to give a contractor? They're saying is the square meter enough or really it's, it's the BER um, assessment they need first and then that will give them the, the roadmap. Yes. So yeah. what, what we're essentially looking for is an upgrade report, what we call it. It's essentially mm -hmm. a technical assessment slash upgrade report. Okay. But on that report, it will show you the, the U values of, of all your elements as they stand and what mm -hmm. you need to install to bring it up to B2 level. Mm -hmm. So it, that is essentially a roadmap. And as part of that report, there will be areas of windows, walls, attics, the whole lot involved. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to price that up because we're working on a meter squared cost anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, I send people back prices in. 15 minutes and they go, <laughs> how would you do that? Like, mm -hmm. It's a simple process when you're working on areas of meter square cost. Sure. Okay. Okay. Now that's, that's fantastic. And then um, this we talked about, which is, is funny, Fergal, but, you know, delighted somebody actually asked the question. So they're, they're saying that they'd heard that the approved SEAI contractors or trades charge more when there's a grant available and how do they avoid that? So maybe you could... Uh... <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. This Remove is a common that. one of these, as you can it imagine. It is, it is, yeah. But um, yeah. I suppose the best explanation of, of um, price differences is if you come to Enviroby Retrofit and we give mm. you a price of, say, 1,200 euros to upgrade your attic. Mm -hmm. So Johnny down the road would say, I'll do it for 400. But the mm. difference is, is that we're both probably rolling out 400 mil of insulation in the attic Mm. And then Johnny comes down and into his van and off with his 400 euros. Whereas the barrel beater is still there. We have to insulate the cold water storage tank. We have to lag all the pipes. We have to ensure that any heavy electrical cables like shower or cooker are above the installation. And the mm. big one really is at the eaves detail on an attic. I mean, attics are probably the most failed inspection and the simplest measure, but they're the most failed. So Really? Okay. Yes, at, at, at the attic um, or at the um, eaves level where you mm. meet this pinch point. So the idea is that your attic insulation meets your walls. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can imagine, that's the pinch point of the roof. 
Um, you have an installer on his belly trying to get insulation in out to mm-hmm. the outside insulation. But he also has to leave the soffit vent clear to allow air, air circulation. So the way around this is to push the insulation all the way out to worry about the soffit insulation and put in roof vents, whether tile or okay. safe roof. Hmm. So straight away we're up to a, a bigger cost because we're putting in proper ventilation. Hmm. Um, I mean, your attic has, hatch has to be insulated. You have to seal the attic hatch. You have to put latches on it so that it pulls down tight. So hmm. there's a whole lot more involved in an attic installation than, you know. So can you get it done cheaper? Of course you can. But we are regulated by SEI inspections. Hmm. So we have to adhere to current building regulations. We have SR54, which is standard regulations 54. It's, it's a 2014 document, but still relevant today. Mm-hmm. And then SEI have their own code of practice for contractors, which is 200 pages of, of information of how mm-hmm. this has to be done. So our work is all inspected and you can get it done cheaper, but that, that follows into every element of it. I mean, sure. you can yeah. put in heat pumps and not have it inspected. I wouldn't mm-hmm. advise it. Mm-hmm. You can do external insulation. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not rocket science stuff, but mm-hmm. even the likes of external insulation is sold as a system. So your sills are part of that system and your render is part of that system. So mm-hmm. if you start mixing up systems, you know, this is all NSAI certified and the installer is certified. So mm-hmm. those, you're paying for regulation and you're paying for the comfort of knowing it's done right and mm-hmm. it's inspected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and, the big and, and a, price. <laughs> no, for sure, but a more comprehensive job by the sound of it as well. You know, like yes. it's, it's it's a different level of work and uh, more time consuming. But um, no, it makes I total you sense. Have to be careful that your price and apples with apples. I mean, I'd well, that's it. I'd exactly. What exactly are you doing for this quote? What are they covering? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it makes total sense. Okay, fantastic. And you mentioned the attics there, like we've loads and loads of um, questions about attics. So, you know, the first one, are there grants available for attic insulation and any grants specific to the over 70s? And actually we had uh, lots about OAPs. Are there different grants for OAPs? Um, how does that work? So there's a few different um, um, schemes running with SDI. So um, there's a mm-hmm. warmer home scheme, which is, in essence, a free upgrade for anyone in receipt of certain social welfare. Maybe mm-hmm. the OAPs would qualify under that. Mm-hmm. Um, there is no, um, there's no age gain for anyone <laughs> other than no, that. No, you no. Know? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Um, that's that's a, a free upgrade, but um, that's where it's the same upgrades, but um, you're essentially on a list. And, mm. But there's huge money being pumped into that. Mm. 200 million for this year next year mm. for, uh, mm. that's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay and for the attics in particular what, what kind of grant would somebody apply for if it's if it's an attic yeah so there's there's the better energy homes grants which are single grants um so there's 400 euros for an attic installation 400 euros okay. for cavity wall installation and um, they're what we would call shallow retrofit where you're phasing out the work um, mm. The idea behind the launching of something like the Better Energy Home Scheme is that they're not trying to force it, but they're trying to encourage you to do a full retrofit and walk away with a B2 rate of house at the end of it, rather than gotcha. doing it over years. And say, no. Okay, okay. Right. And actually, just on that point, somebody asked the question, the difference between the National Home um, Retrofit Scheme and the Better Energy um, the big difference is, I suppose, the, the, the Better Energy Home Scheme are based on in around 25 to 30% of installation. For single measures, they're, um, you know, so they're, they're straightforward. You, you, you can apply for those grants um, tonight and get a decision tomorrow morning. And, okay. you go, and you have eight months, and I think they've even pushed that out to 10 months because of the pandemic um, to use that grant to prove it. Okay. Um, so, then the, the, the major difference between the, the rec, full retrofit grant is that, as I said, they're encouraging you to complete the full retrofit rather than the single measure. So they will cover the cost of 35% of windows and doors and ventilation. Okay. Uh, there's no grants for those as a single measure. Okay. That's okay. probably the tipping point on someone saying, well, we'll go all in or, or we'll do 
you know, bit, bit by bit. bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Okay, now that, that's really good. And just with the grants, because another question, we got loads of questions about this. In terms of payment, do people have to pay up front and then they claim it back? Or how does it work? Uh, so, for paying for the work? Yeah, environmental retrofits model, um, there are many models out there, but um, we would charge for the work minus the grant and the energy credit. So two sources of funding there, the grant and the energy credit to create that. Funding. So we that's that's your full payment, uh, yeah. and we wait for the grant. So by doing that, there's another certain amount of comfort from the homeowner is that we have to pass inspections to get paid. To get so, paid, well, that's really good. Yeah, we're, yeah. because we're yeah. waiting for the grant. Um, yeah. Obviously, they don't pay out if you fail inspection. So, mm. um, we are essentially it's a it's a small bit of confidence booster for the good. homeowner in terms of yeah. well, if yeah. he doesn't get it right, he's not going. You know, so. Yeah, great. Yeah. And so, who applies then? Are you involved in the application, or or how does that? Yes. Work? So, yeah. um, there's there's a list of service providers on the SEI website under the National Home Register. Mm. But there's only fourteen service providers on it. Um, mm -hmm. Two of those are energy agencies, and two of those are BERs that are applying mm -hmm. for grants. So it's a very very small industry at the minute. Um, the whole idea is to upscale this thing. But yes, we apply. So. The, the buzzword at the minute is one-stop shop. So we are essentially a one-stop shop from initial inquiry all the way up to inspection and handover. So that's okay. the whole idea. That's the process that they are trying to set up in that. From your initial inquiry, you're brought on the retrofit journey all the way to completion and follow-up. That's great. Well, then we should backtrack, Fergal. I mean, with all the questions about where to start, call Fergal. That's that's exactly where you start. <laughs> you take care of it from there. Yeah. That's fantastic. And what about the BER assessment then? Can you organise that, or is that completely separate? Do you um, BER recommend people? Or? Um, obviously, we can advise on 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 um, or, or recommend BER people. assessments. But yeah. we are contractors at the end of the day, and mm. we are more comfortable with an independent assessment. As, as sure. contractors, we shouldn't be advising homeowners on what to do. Obviously, mm -hmm. no. I mm -hmm. advise people every day. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you're, you're keeping that independence. They have an independent report showing what is best for the homeowner to use. Brilliant. What yeah. best to use, you know. So we would leave that in the um, Okay. The initial contact is with me. You get all the information and say, you know where to go. Then you go off and you engage with a competent BER assessor and you mm -hmm. get your energy upgrade report. Mm -hmm. Then you're coming back to me looking for a quote. We're all happy with putting it into an application. That goes through an evaluation process for our SEI. And this is probably an important point about, um, you know, people say up to 35%. It is up to 35%, but it's 35% to get to a P2. Um, if you go above and beyond that, and most homeowners do, the important thing to remember is that SEI are bringing you to a B2. Um, so, you know, like Windows is a good one where um, if you want to go with your value cloud or whatever expensive, more expensive mm. window, mm. Um, SEI initially are not looking at aesthetics. They only care about the terminal performance of that window. Sure. So what they okay. say is that they will support a triple glaze window, white PVC, whatever it is, to that U value or that, you know, that term of performance. And if you want to go above and beyond that, that's fine. But they will support it to the level of, so they're only interested in the performance, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes mm -hmm. sense in that. Um, and that goes for all measures. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to go mm -hmm. above and beyond where, like, cavity wall installation and attic installation may well be enough, and your windows may well be enough for your fabric. But if you want mm -hmm. to add external insulation onto that, they'll support it to a certain extent comes to a point where um, they are kind of, I won't say capping is a terrible word, but we use it all the time, capping measures. But they're essentially not. They're bringing you to a B2. Mm. Um, if you want to go above and beyond that, that's great. I mm. encourage everyone to go above and beyond that. Mm. Um, it's not supported to that kind of level. I see. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. And I just see a question come in there. Is there a limit on the age of the house? Uh, CAI grants um, are houses built before 2006. Bought house in January 2006, so ineligible for SEAI grants. Um, yeah, the 2006 is, is, so it comes down to your meter board uh, when the electricity was switched on. So okay. all these grants are pre-2006, with the exception of 
and PD and he comes our receptor up to pre-2011. Mm -hmm. um, okay. it's, a, it's a big one that we're always in discussion with um, SBI about. I mean, eventually it will tip over where 2007 and 2008 and 9 were today. But the argument is, is that the building regulations at the time, if they were followed, should have your fabric at a level of, of, of where we should be, you know. Um, yeah. But as we all know, um, especially during the boom, houses went up so quick. We, I know, know, I know. I don't know yeah. what went into them. No, um, so no. I suppose they're, yeah. they're falling into that category of yes. the forgotten people. Um, yeah. They did, they, they, they do have the option of PV and, um, and heat pumps, but the installation has to be for 4006 at the minute. At the moment, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Hopefully the years will jump from up. But, I mean, the more you go up, the better the houses should be anyway. Sure, but, sure. You know, yeah, that's not yeah. always the case. Yeah, okay, okay, fantastic. Brilliant. And then, um, yeah, we got just questions, lots and lots of questions, and I've seen this on your own website, but loads of people asking, um, are there grants for windows? And uh, for windows and doors, is it 35% of supply and fit or just supply that the grant is for? Okay, and so through the full retrofit package, yes, there are 35% for windows and doors. And yeah, yeah that's, that's finished, completed, and it reveals, put back the way they were. And Everything's it, su supply and fit, okay. Apart from decorating, okay. Denise, it's, it's um, yeah, back as it was. Yes, okay, okay, Yeah, so Fantastic. it's full installation. But you can't just do windows on its own. You can't no. isolate them, can you? No. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, and then the other question was all to do with replacing oil boilers. Um, we had one lady. Yeah, she's ideas for ditching a central uh, oil central heating. Live rural rurally in a, with a large twenty year old extension, which is the main living space. Would retrofitting a heat recovery system be a big expensive undertaking? Um, heat recovery, as in heat recovery, is just a ventilation system. So that's right. Yeah, I that don't. Heat maybe energy. she means a heat pump. I'd say she means heat pump. Um, yeah, heat pumps are, yeah. are look, they're, they're great machines, um, but obviously you wouldn't put a heat pump in a barn. Because, um, but this is it. it it's yeah, it's the rest the of the house, and so, I'd say it's quite a large house, you know. So yeah, yeah. Well, size doesn't matter. You can size a heat pump. Yeah. I look at Facebook and see all these horror stories about heat pumps and electricity bills. Now, yeah. the only thing that's happening there is um, if the poor old heat pump gets blamed for everything. Um, it's, it's either poor sizing of the heat pump itself, poor sizing of um, radiators um, of the full system, we'll say, mm. or it's just not installed correctly. I mean, mm. heat pumps um, essentially are the simplest of technology. You know, mm -hmm. everyone has a heat pump in their house. You go back to the, the fridge scenario. The fridge, exactly. You put your yeah. hand at the yeah. side of the fridge or put your hand mm. back to the fridge to keep the emission. Um, that's in cooling mode. So it's pulling the heat out of the box, which is the fridge, and that's where you're getting the heat. So you mm. put that in reverse, that's a heat pump essentially. You know? The other good one about describing heat pumps, people ask it. It reminds me of the, the, the man on the bus asking about tracker mortgage now. I get asked all the time what is heat pump? So it's, mm. it's if, if you remember being late for school and the and the tire of the bike was flat and you pump up the tire and you feel the valve after it was heat. So that's essentially what's happening is there's air being pulled into the house from the outdoor fan. It's going through a compressor which is that pumping up and creating heat. There's a mm. refrigerant involved that boils at low temperatures. That's essentially mm. heating your water. So mm -hmm. I would say to people that don't be afraid of these technologies. It's mm. certainly not rocket science. Um, mm. Scandinavians have been using these things 30, 40 years. And they're great systems. Mm. Was, we're, we're brainwashed here with the, um, the hot radiators when you come in from a cold day. You know, I mean, I grew up in a house where you had single glazed windows with a rat under the window. Same going to school, if you sat down along the windows, it was a VIP seat because you were beside the rat. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So we have to move on from all that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. Heat pumps, PV, very simple technology. I listen mm -hmm. to people in the industry talking about heat pumps, PV. And there's an effort to make it more complicated than it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm doing myself out of a job here, but these are simple systems. They are, yeah. No rocket yeah. science. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Certainly, don't be afraid of installing. Yeah. No. Fantastic. Definitely. Um, and just on the uh, PV panels, just lots of questions as well. Are they worth investing in? What are your thoughts on? Because <laughs> I know there was a lot of like. Uh, I remember even 10 years ago, you'd be told, oh, it's pointless. You'll never get the, you'll never recoup the cost. And by the time you recoup the cost, they'll, you know, yeah. there'll be new technology and all this sort of stuff. But uh, yeah. And, and look, if, if, if we all thought like that, you'd never buy a laptop, you know. No, no, no well, exactly. Out of the shop. <laughs> um, um, yeah. PV is, is, a, is an interesting one. Yes, I mean, have all these conversations about PV. Is it worth it? Is it not? Um, it's down to occupancy. How you use your house. If you're leaving your house at seven in the morning and coming back at seven in the evening, there's no point in having PV on your roof, exporting mm -hmm. it all to the grid. It's not doing anything for you. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, from my own, I, I have 3.9 kilowatts of PV with a five kilowatt battery. Mm -hmm. um, it's in since late 2019, and just on last year, providing 35 to 40 percent of my electricity costs last year. I think it was over mm -hmm. seven. So if you put that into monetary terms, then that's four, maybe four and a half, four, kind of 450 euros worth of electricity. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I went through the deep retrograde grant at the time, so I was looking up at a 50% grant. Um, and even at that, it's, you're, like, you're looking at eight, 10 year payback. But hmm. if the system lasts for 20 years, it's obviously worth doing. Brilliant. I think yeah. we yeah. have to get away from looking at that. Um, I know payback is an important um, aspect, of it, mm. but if you look at the whole retrograde as a package, um, mm. you can't put a price on comfort for everyone. No, absolutely. And, and, yeah. and that's the benefit. Of it. Yeah. So yeah. I would say yeah, PV sits well with a heat pump because both one is generating electricity, the other is using it. Mm. Mm. People talk about divergence of heat or water heat from PV, but if you have a heat pump, um, your heat pump is heating your water at 250% efficiency. So mm -hmm. your electricity, one unit goes in and you're getting two and a half units of heat, whereas mm -hmm. the water diverter is just giving you a one or two one because it's electricity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. PV is certainly a huge um, research project for anyone that's looking into it. Not a huge mm -hmm. one. Look into, I mean, it's down to how you're going to use it. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to have payback tariffs coming in that will mm -hmm. be Minimal, as in, I don't know, will there be four or five cents, whatever, whereas you're buying it just for um, Yeah, okay. Certainly won't be retiring on um, what you get back from TV, but mm. um, it's, it's an individual decision. Um, people will advise you, obviously, one way or the other. Again, down to your BR assessor who will independently advise you. If you're talking to someone that's selling you PV, you know, oh, I've, yeah, seen, sure. I've seen the adverts where they're saying that it'll, it'll reduce your electricity cost by 70%. Mm. Uh, maybe at optimum conditions for 12 months. And, mm. and we know in Ireland, <laughs> we don't get it. The other one yeah. about PV is that people will always say, well, it's most beneficial in the summer when you don't need it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and least beneficial in the winter when you do. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if it's, if it's in the summer, if you're, if you're heating your water, which you'll, you're going to need hot water all year round, Mm. Yeah, it's worth it. It's yeah. just worth looking into. You know? Definitely, I batteries yeah. Batteries are a big thing, and batteries yeah. are still expensive. So yeah. maybe that's yeah. the drawback. Okay, okay, that's great, great, Fergal, brilliant. We had an interesting one. Somebody said they were working, uh, living and working abroad for eight years, and just come back. Um, would they qualify for any grants next year? Are there any restrictions for them having lived abroad? No, um, no? grants okay. are based on the property. Okay. Uh, so it stands to the meter point reference number or MPRN. Um, mm. The house gets a grant, not the person. Not the individual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Brilliant. And I see a question there. Just pull it down. Uh, due to get windows fitted in a couple of months, booked before the new scheme came in, planning larger work this summer to do a full retrofit, could we still get the grant for them? No. Okay. <laughs> it's, um, it, it's not a retrospective grant, so... You need okay. approval in writing before you complete any work. Uh, okay. okay. So, and that's that's the same with all the grants. You need approval before you proceed kind of thing. And even the likes of windows are dead stamped. So mm -hmm. have that mm -hmm. yeah. big investigation to find out when they 
Okay, what about if somebody had ordered the windows? Uh, they hadn't done the work with it. No, they have to. It's no, before it's, you've done anything. Yeah, this is down yeah. to, um, I suppose, planning a retrofit and proceeding with the retrofit. As part of the planning is the grant approval. Is the grant approval, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Like, well, otherwise, we'd, we'd have windows in our order. Then. Oh, jeepers. So. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And then there's another question there, Fergal. In, intend to use mortgage funds for full retrofit. Can I apply and would it differ to a usual applicant? No, it's no difference. I um, hmm. don't think it makes any difference. Where that, like, there's, a, there's a huge push on retrofitting, as we know. Um, hmm. There's also a huge push on the, the financial side of things. I mean, obviously, that's one of the main barriers to people leaving retrofit. Um, so you have finance is one barrier. You have don't be a, a, once it, well, there is a, a lack of labour and lack of skills. Don't be the next barrier. Mm. But it doesn't matter where the finance comes from. But at the minute, I see low cost green loans at five percent. I mean, the Germans are are, are giving out low cost green loans at between one and two percent. So we have a bit of catching up to do in that mm. regard. But um, it doesn't matter where the finance comes from. Um, I think AIB are, are, are maybe they're all that, but I, I know AIB have a, a, a two point something percent mortgage based on the house being B2. So mm -hmm. that can include retrofit in existing house, and the retrofit is attached to the mortgage. But, okay, that's you know, interesting. So, yeah. yeah, it's worth looking into the finance side of things, but it doesn't matter where the finance comes from. Okay, okay, now that's great. Brilliant. And then, um, yeah, there's somebody here who's who's got a B3, so they're planning on extending their home. It's already very warm. It's a B3. What grants could they avail of? Okay, so anyone that's C1 or above is going to be going through the Better Energy Homes Grant, which is a single measure grant. The mm -hmm. reason for that is so the National Home Retrofit Scheme takes C2 and below. Um, mm -hmm. There's more work with involved, as in a full retrofit on a B3. They already have all the work done at the at B3. You know? So SEI's argument on this one would be that one measure would bring you out to B2. Bring you up to B2, okay. So yeah, if you're a yeah. B3 with an oil or gas boiler, I mean, the efficiency of the heat pump is 350 or 400% right into the air. Hmm. So hmm. that's why anyone C1 and above, single measure will bring them up to B2 minimum manual. Okay, okay, fantastic, brilliant. Great. And then, oh, yes, this was a good one. So uh, somebody thinking of putting the heat pump to the side of their house at first floor level. How much room do they need to leave between two houses? Um, if they're doing yeah. that at the side. For the outdoor fan, yeah. Um, yeah. The more the merrier is the answer, but there are minimum requirements. It's only uh, just 250 mil required behind the heat pump from the, your own wall out. And then there's, mm. I guess, only 350 from the rest of it, um, it reduces um, efficiency. Um, you know, we, we've had call outs from people that like heat pumps go wrong from human inter intervention. That's what happened. Um, so someone didn't like to look at the outdoor unit and they put a, a lovely um, fencing around. Oh, it. fence around it um, or whatever, you know, yeah. So yeah. then they rang up saying, it's the not electricity working. bills are gone through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> What's going wrong? So, yeah. Yeah, it does. It, it needs airflow because obviously yeah. the air is, is what's driving it through your compressor. That's what mm -hmm. creates heat. So um, there are minimum, but 350 is a lot. Yeah. But most, I mean, yes, you can put them in alleyways and it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Okay, so the, yeah. yeah, the more air they have around them, the better, more Absolutely. efficiently they're going to yeah. run. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's good. Now they can be wall hung or ground. You know, my, my yeah. own one is wall hung. As well, huh? Any so away, rule of thumb for best location for them, Fergal? Um, when it comes uh, look, to... they recommend not putting them under bedroom windows. That's exactly where I put ours, but it's not my bedroom. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Very <laughs> it doesn't good. bother me as such. But yeah. um, they, like, when they're working at their hardest, they reckon the decibel level is like someone talking. Um, I even find that, that that would be louder than I have experienced. Um, We've triple glazed windows, so we, we mm. don't really hear anything anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, yeah, ideally, you're, you're trying to place them um, not as close to the indoor unit, but because there's refrigerants and there's pipework, so to reduce your, your runs, you're, you're trying to place it 
near enough your indoor unit. You know? Okay, okay, so not I miles away, they, yeah. They, yeah. No, well, they have 10 meters to play with under refrigeration. Okay, even okay. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, look, just, you can put them on the ground anywhere, but yeah. you don't want pipe work outside that, that giving you losses. Of course, the ground outside, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, but Brilliant. again, when it comes to, to um, locations and hugely important that you talk to the key pump installer. Mm. And you go through all this before he arrives and says, right, I'm not there. You need mm. all this agreed. I mean, ideal locations for even for indoor units are with the, in the hot press it's big enough. Yeah, an indoor unit is about the size of an American fridge freezer. Mm -hmm. So in that is an integrated uh, thermal store which replaces mm. your hot water cylinder. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a, a big enough unit at, at that. But if it fits in the hot press, fine and or else where your existing boiler was. Only because your pipe work is already there with it. But mm -hmm. of course, you can put it anywhere, you just have to pipe to it. Yes, yeah, okay. So Fantastic. Agreeing a location is very important. Oh, yeah. But, then but that again, it's experience because no, my, own, yeah. my own wife, uh, Carol, is always giving out about the location of our indoor <laughs> unit. <so. laughs> No, but it is it is so true, and I, I guess like that is why you know having the plan, not jumping into these things, you know, thinking yes. about it from top to bottom, and getting the right advice is so important. So, you know, no, that's great. And I see just another question there: uh, somebody with an F-rated home, what scheme do you recommend for them? Yeah, um, again, the National Home Retrofit Scheme is going to give you the full works at thirty-five percent. That's, I mean, it's down to are you going to do all this in one go? I mean, if you're going to start yeah. pulling windows and doors out, I mean, mm. that's enough disruption to, to make you go the whole way anyway. Yeah, so yeah. Do it all in one go. Okay. That's it done. You're, you're future proof. Great. Okay. How long does it take to for the grants to come through or for the application to get approved, Fergal, typically? Like, how how much in advance do you need to start planning all of this stuff? Um, the, uh, the evaluations at the minute are, are anything between four and six weeks. Okay. Uh, now, there's, there's an evaluation process and then it goes to legal and contract. But remember, all this is legal agreement the government. So, um, there's, there's, there's a lot to, to get through. Mm -hmm. Four to six weeks, on average, you could get back. Okay. And then any applications in at the minute have to be completed by October, uh, the middle of October, 14th of the day this year. Um, the team is going to reopen for applications either June or July, and that would be for work continuing in, into 2022. Okay. Um, so, okay. you know, the options are there if you if too much pressure to have it done by this October. You can always line up an application in July and have your approval ready to go and I mean, have it to last over 2022. So very good. Okay, great. And then, do can people apply as individuals, or do they need to go through somebody like yourself, or how does that work? Yes. Yeah, so the National Home Retrofit Scheme is um, through a service provider. Um, we have to group houses together to, to apply. But no individual application. SDI, okay. in their wisdom, says we're not dealing with individual home. Owners. Okay. So, I mean, that's what it stands. But yeah. it's it's. Yeah. It, it's a relevance of how it goes in. It is an individual application within a bigger. Okay. So okay. Each property goes in and is evaluated on its own. On its own merit. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Brilliant. Great. And then there was one question. I'm just looking for it here. Um, oh, yeah. Just coming back to again, this is a detached uh, home that was built in 2002. What grants for updating, insulating? Uh, what would you recommend for them? Yeah, again, the, the full package grants are okay. Your individual grants are there. Um, yeah. The the heat pump grant requires a technical assessment anyway. Um, so there, uh, the technical assessments are costing five six hundred euros at the minute. If you go ahead with the grant, you get two hundred euros back from SCI. So um, it's three and a half thousand and the two hundred. Mm -hmm. um, but what they're looking for in the technical assessment is what they call the HLI or the heat loss indicator number. So that's essentially looking at your fabric and your walls, your windows, your doors, your rack, all in one. And mm -hmm. if that number is less than two, let's say your heat pump ready and under certain circuits, 
two, three. Um, mm -hmm. So that's essentially saying this house is capable of having heat running. Uh, as we said earlier, you know, you wouldn't put a heat in the barn. Mm -hmm. That's your barge. Mm -hmm. That's to endure. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a regulation in that SEI are policing it so that installers aren't putting them into houses um, that aren't insulated well enough to take them because um, poorly insulated houses buy a lot of oil for the electricity that that would use oh, because gosh. they're just not made yeah. for them. No, 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 of course. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Great. And then an interesting question just there. If your house is built before 2005 but not lived in until 2006, are you eligible for the grants? Again, it's down to when it's the electricity was turned on. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. okay. That is interesting. Right, okay. And how would somebody find that out if they didn't own the house or I if, suppose they have to? Well, yeah. Um, if you open the meter board, it's, it's the it'll tell you. There's yeah. a date yeah. stamp okay. on it from DSB when they connect. Yeah, okay. Um, and actually, there were lots of questions. I see one there, an old period red brick. Can you get them up to a B2 minimum? And then somebody else asking, like, are there any houses that just can't get to a B2? Like, what's your experience there? Have you? Um, yeah, look, every house can get there. Um, yeah, just going to be more expensive. Saying, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my father had a great saying that the impossible just takes a bit longer. But, okay, um, yeah. The only houses that can't achieve B2 are listed uh, buildings because this has come up over and over again over the years. Say, I'm looking to put a heat pump in here, but can't insulate the wall inside or outside. <laughs> Mm, you know, so mm, mm, um, mm. they're the only ones that uh, are, are, they just can't get there because you can't do the work to, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually we had one there and I, I gosh, there's just so many, I, I can't find it. But there was somebody who said like, in, um, here we go. Yeah, are heat pumps an option for Victorian semi-detached external insulation not possible and internal insulation tricky to do? Again. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. If you can't insulate the walls, it's, it's an yeah. impossibility. You know? like, mm -hmm. Obviously, the only option there is the tricky to do option. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, I've looked at all these houses before where, okay, you can't touch the outside and then you go inside and there's original cornice and there's data rails and picture rails and you're saying you really can't touch them. So mm. there's, unless there's a, a, an invisible insulated plaster that can be, that, that can be applied in the future, um, there's there's just no way of addressing the wall because you, we, you can't touch it. You, know? you can't touch it, yeah. Right, okay. Um, and oh, I see one here. Uh, are heat pumps okay to use if your home is close to the sea, to the near the seaside? Yeah, it does. They're, they're, they're talking about the salt air. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was actually a special coating on the outdoor units for for um, heat pumps that are installed in that situation. So Brilliant. Okay. They don't grow it. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Well, look, I'm looking at the time, Fergal. We've taken up so much of your time, and we could honestly go through this. We'll, we'll definitely have to. We'll have to do another one and if come you, back. If you've got think... as many questions as I did, Denise, we'll be here till Monday. But, <laughs> I know, um, and I was saying, it's absolutely saying brilliant it's... though to discuss it because, as I yeah. said, um, there's a kind of a. Um, and a lack of awareness about these grants. It's great. It's yes, and a nervousness. And, and I think you, you said it um, perfectly. Like there are lots of people who know, but they just think, oh God, that's just going to be so much hassle. I, I'd rather not bother. And then there is that misinformation that, Asha, look, you know, if you get the contractors that are registered, they're way more expensive anyway. So, yeah. you know, I, I think this is so important. It is so worth speaking to the experts like yourself and get the best advice uh, before you start any kind of work on your home because the payoff is enormous. So, so, so important yeah. to get it right. And I was Absolutely. saying, Fergal, that it, it's re you've a fabulous um, Instagram account yourself, but you've some great uh, Q&A sections on your own account. So just encouraging people to go back and take a look at those because loads and loads of interesting questions that you've dealt with there. So, so much information. Amazing. Brilliant. Well, look, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much. And uh, yeah, definitely, we should go back and do another one because uh, there is just so much to go through. Fergal, We've only gone through a small piece of the jest. <laughs> I know, I know. Tip of the iceberg. Thanks All right. for having me on. It was great. My okay. pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, bye, bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye.